Hey guys, so I filmed a long wrap up of my October and most of November reads and then I like stopped filming again because I got really upset with not having cable again. So this is my wrap up of all the books that I've read since November 26th. Um, so there's a decent chunk. I debated waiting till December was over to just do like one all encompassing wrap up but I figured that would probably be insane because I plan on reading quite a bit more before the end of the year. So <laughs> let's just get started. So the last book that I read in, not last, there, I read two more books in November. One of them was What She Knew by Jilly or Gilly McMillan. This is um, the last book that I talked to you about that I was currently reading at that point. Um, it is a thriller novel. I bought it for a dollar at my library bookstore. It was okay. I gave it three or four stars I can't recall right now um but it's about this woman and she is taking a walk with her son and she says he turns to her and he goes can I run ahead and she's like sure never to see him again <laughs> kind of thing so then there's a whole ensue about them looking into the mom and mom and dad are split up so then they're looking at dad and there's this whole dynamic and her friends and I thought it was okay it's just it's so long so it dragged quite a bit and I felt like by the time we got who did it it wasn't somebody I was expecting to have done it and I didn't care at that point like who did it wasn't like oh my goodness I would have never thought it was this person it was just like where did that come from it can't it, it felt kind of from like left field a little bit um but I did enjoy it this is technically book one in because I think it follows like the detective um, I think book two, like, keeps following this detective, so I think there's a second book of him solving a different mystery. So I am intrigued to pick up the next one. It just wasn't my favorite. It was okay. Just, sometimes thrillers that are this long are just too long. Like, I need it to be fast-paced, and need to be quick, and this just was kind of slow, unfortunately. So, there's that. Then after that, I picked up Once Upon a Prince by Rachel Hawk. This is the first book in the Royal Wedding series, and I really enjoy this book. I give this book five stars. If you didn't know, I'm a little obsessed with Rachel Hawk. I love everything she writes, so I'm really working my way through all of her work. And I read a novella from this series last year because of the Fiction Guild, so I knew that eventually I was going to want to pick up the real series, and it's really good. Um, this reminds me of... No, I'm not going to be able to say it. This, um, what's that movie? It's a movie with Mandy Moore, and she's from America, and this prince comes over, and she thinks he's real, like, just a regular guy, and he turns out to be the prince and soon-to-be king. Is it prince? No. I think prince is in the title, but I can't think of it right now. It, it follows this girl, and she's living her life. She just got out of this really long relationship that she thought was going to be the one. She meets this guy and it turns out that he is a prince. So really good. I'm actually currently reading book two in that series right now. Actually I have it right here. I'm currently reading Princess Ever After by Rachel Hawk. I am only 52 pages in but really excited. I'm hoping to possibly finish this trilogy by the end of the year. We'll see. <laughs> Um, and then I read Winter Solstice by Ellen Hildebrand. This is the fourth book in the Winter Street Quartet, and I am devastated that this series is over. I cried like a baby at the end of this book. Um, this family, I'm just so connected to. Um, this is Ellen Hildebrand's only series. Um, she basically only read, writes standalone books. I realize, though, I've read everything she's written except two. One I own, I just haven't gotten to it yet because I've heard mixed things about it. And then the other one, I just somehow never owned it. I don't know how that happened, but I've read everything she's written except two. But the thing that I loved the most about this book that I think some people were, like, confused by if they don't know Ellen in general, um, there she introduces another character in this book but that character is from another one of her books. And I am always so amazed. I'm like, how do all of your books take place on this tiny island of Nantucket that none of them ever see each other? I thought that was always weird that, like, we've never had another character pop in 
and she did it this time. She included a character from The Rumor, and I was so excited about it because it felt like, finally, like, you're on a small island. How have you never seen each other before? So, this series I love, and I'm devastated that it's over, but definitely well worth the reads. They're, like, definitely, like, guilty pleasure reads where, like, I know people, like, complain about them, but I think that they are utterly fantastic, so I highly recommend them anyways. Then I picked up The Wishing Season by Denise Hunter because I assumed with the snow on the cover that this would have something to do with winter. And it doesn't really have anything to do with winter, but um, this is the third book in the Chapel Springs Romance Quartet as well. There's four books in this series. Another series that I would love to finish before the end of the year now that I have a second Denise Hunter book to pick up. Um, but this follows their companion novel, so like, I don't want to spoil books at all. It follows this family and each book follows another like sibling or another person in this world um, in this family. So I don't want to spoil it but I definitely enjoyed this one. This was another 5 out of 5 star read for me. I really enjoyed this one. Um, so yes. I had a really good reading month this, month, this past like month. Um, then I was like curious about what to pick. I didn't know what to read and I told Patrick and I said go into my reading room pick a book for me to read he picked this one um I also did say that he had to pick it from my TBR pile um but I was intrigued that he picked this one because this was the one that I was the most nervous about and he knew I was the most nervous about it which is why he picked it and I actually gave this book four stars this is the first book in a trilogy um and I I really enjoyed it. Um, I probably cannot tell you in words what it's about because it's a fantasy novel, but it does have to do with these seasonal kingdoms and I forgot what the other things are called. Kingdoms and... I couldn't tell you what they were called, but there's like other like regional things that don't have to do with seasons. But the winter kingdom has kind of depleted spring I think it was the spring kingdom that kind of just like took them over and now they're like they um took a whole bunch of people as like slaves but these certain people escape and they're trying to get their kingdom back and I actually give this book four stars I rather enjoyed it um and I'm looking forward to picking up the next book which is Ice Like Fire at some point but for a non-huge fantasy reader this one was pretty good then the one disappointment read that I was really sad about was The Wedding Sisters by Jamie Brenner. <laughs> if you've been watching me when I bought this book, I was so excited about this. Ellen Hildebrand even has a quote on the front, so I was like, this is going to be the best book I've ever read in my life. No. It follows these three sisters, and they are all named after, um characters from Little Women and they all at some point throughout the book get engaged so they're gonna have a three-way wedding which I felt like was kind of a spoiler. It's not because it's on the back but like one of the sisters doesn't get engaged for a while like it they don't all get engaged at the same exact time. Um, they decide to have this three-way wedding because mom and dad are like not sure if they're gonna be able to afford three weddings each one of these girls is, like, marrying, like, someone really, like, above their, like, status in life. Um, and Dad is having some difficulties with his work. And I just, like, felt like every single person had so much drama. Like, Dad had, like, ten storylines. Mom had some storylines going on. The three sisters had storylines going It was, like, drama to the point of, like, enough. Like, this can't all happen to one family. This can't all happen to one girl. Like, it just, like, was so unrealistic that I just, uh, it made me so angry. It was, like, making people have problems for the sake of having problems. Another author who likes to throw in big words for the sake of throwing in big words. I just, I, I, mm, it was a real struggle for me to finish this book, and I gave this book two stars. I just couldn't, and I was so devastated because I wanted to love this book so much, and I felt like there was nothing redeeming about it. The end was kind of redeeming a little bit, but not so much. I was really, really disappointed by this book. Then I switched to The Bake Off by Beth Kendrick, and then I went back to five stars. This follows um, these two sisters, and they've kind of... 
something happened in their past that have kind of like split them up and they end up in a baking competition together and it was a lot of fun. Love, hijinks, baking. It was, I love Beth Kendrick. I have read, this is now my fifth book I think by her and I really, really enjoy her writing and she's just fun and lighthearted and just something light and fluffy like this frosting. <laughs> Then I took a break and I went to the mistletoe moment because I was really worried at this point. Like I hadn't been really reading throughout weeks. Like I tend to read a lot on the weekends now and not during the week. So I was like, well, maybe this will inspire me to read during the week because it's three short stories by Kat Johnson, Kate Engel, and Allison Charles. And so I was like, oh, maybe I could read a book a day or whatever. That didn't happen. I ended up reading two books in one day and then I finished the other one the next morning or something like that. I don't remember. But this follows a boyfriend where you can have a fake boyfriend if you like it'll text you it'll send you flowers if you want like so that way you can have this fake boyfriend and obviously follows around like the holidays and I gave this book three stars it's nothing fantastic they're three short stories they're just fun the three stars isn't a bad three stars for me this was just it was okay it served its purpose it did what it needed to do and I enjoyed it so I don't not recommend it. This is actually my least read book of the year. Like when you go on Goodreads, you could look at your year in review and this book has had the least amount of people read it. So <laughs> I don't know how this ended up in my hands, but book outlet. But definitely it was a cute and little chiclet eight book. Then I read um, The Wedding, The Winter Wedding Plan by Olivia Miles. This is the second book to One Week Till the Wedding. Um, I really enjoyed that book over the summer. I read it during one of my 24-hour readathons, so I was so pumped to get this book. It's a companion novel, but, like, obviously still in the same lives as the first one. And I didn't enjoy it as much. The first one I gave five stars. This one I only gave four stars to. Um, I just felt like... It didn't give me everything that I wanted. There was no wedding in this book. Confusion. Yes, very much. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I thought it was alright. I'm still looking forward to the next book. It just didn't impress me as much as the first one did. Now I'm like regretting it. Maybe there was a wedding, but I really don't think there was. No. There really was no wedding. Now I'm nervous. I don't think there was a wedding. I don't remember it. That goes to show why that book got four stars and not five. Then the next book I read was The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. This was one of my most anticipated books once I found out it was coming out. I like Cynthia Hand. I love her Unearthly trilogy. Um... So I knew I was going to have to get my hands on this, especially with it being a Christmas Carol retelling. Um, my lovely husband got it for me because he knew I was on my book buying band, so he bought it for me. And this girl was a Scrooge in her life. They cut, The ghosts visit her, and she's like, forget you. So she dies. <laughs> and then she becomes the ghost of Christmas past. And so we're following her life as the ghost of Christmas past. She is trying, they have one of the other youngest Scrooges ever. And they're trying to save him and she kind of, you know, gets involved in medals and things like that. And I thought this book was really good. The twist at the end was kind of amazing, but kind of like, what? Um... So I was really impressed with what this book turned to at the end. So I really, really enjoyed this book. I gave this book five stars. So like I said, you could tell I was having a really good reading month. So far, only one bad book. Then I got to this one. <laughs> and then I picked up The Princess Bride by William Goldman. This was probably another, like, most disappointing books I have ever read read. So I didn't realize this, so I'm totally gullible and I'm reading this and it says like, oh, S. Mer Morgan Stern, but like, it, um, abridged by William Goldman. And I was like, oh, okay, like I get this, like, okay. It was so boring. Like, if you, like, of course my edition also has, well it has a map, which is fun. 
but it has an introduction to the 30th anniversary so I'm wondering this must be the 30th anniversary edition I don't know but it has the introduction for that then it has the introduction for the 25th anniversary book both of which are boring as hell and I stopped like I started skimming them because they were just boring um and I didn't understand the point um and then we get to the princess bride which the Princess Bride, the story, is good. Like, I enjoyed it. It was exactly, like, what I wanted it to be because I loved the movie so much. But William Goldman interrupts the book all the time to be like, oh, S. Morgenstern thought this, or S. Morgenstern then had this whole chapter that was really boring and goes on for, like, a whole two pages about how boring that chapter was. So I cut it, so I'm cutting the chapter out. I later found out that S. Morgenstern never existed and that William Goldman is pretending to abridge a book that didn't need to be abridged. Like, that was all a joke. All a ruse. All fiction. S. Morgenstern never existed. So that chapter never existed. So he's pretending to cut a chapter that didn't exist. What? What? And then it, like, it goes into a chapter called... Buttercup's Baby, Chapter 1, Fezzik Dies, which is terribly upsetting because I love Fezzik. And it talks about, um, there's also a little, like, 30-page brief about the explanation to that chapter. And about how they weren't allowed to publish it because S. Morgenstern wouldn't let them publish it. S. Morgenstern didn't exist. This is all garbage. I didn't even read the Buttercup Baby part because I was like, this is unreal. Unreal. Why? Just give me the Princess Bride. I don't want all this other crap. I was really, I, I'm gonna stick to the movie. I'm like, get, look at my hair is like getting all out of place. I'm so flustered by this book. <sighs> but I still want to read As You Wish by the guy who plays um, Wesley. Still want to read that. But this book, disappointment to the max. So then yesterday I picked up a book and I read all or Nothing at All by Jennifer Probst. This is the third and final book in the Billionaire Builder series. I'm so sad that it's over, but I figured I was like, I should finish the series before the end of the year. So I picked it up and I read it while the cable company was here for like 10 hours yesterday. No joke, they were here for like 5 hours. It was bad. Um, so I read this book while they were here. I really enjoyed this book. I gave this book 5 stars as well. Um, I think this might be one of my favorite books in the series, even though Tristan kind of was, mm, he was making me angry, making me angry, but I still really enjoyed it. I'm really sad that the series is over, but I did discover she has another series, so you better believe that the minute I get off this book buying ban, I'm going to be buying that series. Yep, so that's that. So those are all the books that I've read since November 26th. <laughs> Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any thoughts about these books down below, and I will see you guys very, very soon. I'm planning on filming all my end of the year stuff, so my favorite books, my d upsetting books, the worst books, the disappointing books, I don't know. I haven't decided. I might kind of copy that from, um, oh, no. I am blinking on everything today. I can't remember her name. But I will probably link her down below. She has done the most surprising, most disappointing, most, like, her best books and her worst books. So I might link her down below. I'm sorry that I'm blanking on her name. But you should definitely check her videos out because I really enjoy watching her videos as well. But I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye, everybody.